Hey, how's it going? This is Jeremy, and we need to talk about this box set. This is going to be an unboxing of the George Harrison Vinyl Collection box set. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing a video tonight, but this just arrived today, so I'm not really well put together. I'm wearing my work shirt with rolled up uh, sleeves, and who knows what's going on. So anyway, this box set, this is the Vinyl Collection George Harrison box set. It came out uh, four years ago. There are already lots of unboxing videos here on YouTube. And this is mine. Just in case you wanted to know what was going on four years later with this thing, what's happening this year with an unboxing of one of these, here we go. Um, I'm not really an expert on unboxing videos. We're just going to go ahead and do it. So uh, I live here in Japan. Uh, I, had to, I ordered this from youdiscovermusic.com. There was a 30% disc or, yeah, 30 discount on it, uh, which basically paid for the shipping, which was kind of expensive, $80. So this whole thing cost me, I don't know, $340 or something. It's every single George Harrison vinyl, or every single studio album on repressed, nice new reproduced vinyl um, from uh, Wonderwall music all the way through Brainwashed. So every studio album. And that includes the live album, the Japan, live in Japan album from 1991. Um, I bought it because, I don't usually buy box sets, this is probably my first box set, um, really. I bought it because I know some of the albums. I know All Things Must Pass extremely well, pass. Uh, I know Living in the Material World fairly well. I know Dark Horse a little bit. I know the George Harrison album from 1979 fairly well. I know Brainwashed really, really well. Uh, none of the others, I may have heard them zero times or one time each. Um, so I just wanted all of George. All the reviews said this was a good set. Let's go ahead and open it. Now I have watched some uh, unboxing videos of various things on YouTube, record videos. And even people who know what they're doing, like the, um, what's that guy, the in, the in Groove or something, the guy in Arizona yeah, who owns like a big record store and he, owns, he has a really good uh, YouTube channel where he talks about the new uh, mobile fidelity records he got in and stuff. Anyway, people like him and other people like him, when they o open things, they'll they'll say, now this is this brand new record and it costs $200. And then they take out this gigantic knife and they're like, <laughs> cutting the plastic off it. And I'm always like, ah! And I'm not, I'm not super delicate with the records. I kind of touch the record surfaces when I get them out of the sleeve. That's just how it is. But I would take a big knife. So I use open scissors because I feel like I can control them better and they're not as... They're not going to slice through the album art. So let's go ahead and get this, get this over with. That's not what I mean. Not get it over with. Let's get it started. I have had a nice dinner. I'm, I'm nice and relaxed. It's a Monday, so I had to wake up early for work today. So I'm kind of tired now. Okay, one thing I noticed about this is that it is, oh crap, it's a, um, kind of a big box. Bigger than the actual box set, I think. I think the box set is pretty much album size and be a little bit bigger. I have heard some people say that when they got theirs, it had been repackaged in like a box that was just big enough for it and thus there was lots of um, damage on it. I think this is okay because it's a bigger box. Oh, don't read the address labels, by the way. It's my address. So here's what we got inside. Styrofoam. What does that mean? Try to do this so you can see it on camera, but so I can see what I'm doing too. That doesn't work. George would have wanted it that way. Oh, I brainwashed is a good album. Just thinking about it now. Brainwashed by the Nikki. Brainwashed by mobile phones. Anyway, hope I don't get a content match on that. Um, here is the box. You can tell I don't do this very often. Okay, another piece of styrofoam in there, and then that's that. And here it is. Oh, wow, I own a box set. I own a box set. The box sets I own are, if you want to get creative or friendly, whatever, with the uh, 
term box set. I own A Gift from a Flower to a Garden by Donovan, which is two albums in a weird little box set. I own uh, Porgy and Bess by Ray Charles and Cleo Lane from 1976. That was a box set on RCA. And I do own the triple, quadruple record Stadium Arcadium by Red Hot Chili Peppers. It came out in 2020. And I did an unboxing video on that one. But this is a whole nother thing. Don't think I need that. See, that's pretty good. You don't need... It's all packaged without tape except for the very outer box. That's good. So anyway, remove this, and there we are. Let me see, let me slide this. I'll keep it on this. Okay, so anyway, here's the box set. Looks pretty good, it's a little dusty on top. But that's all right. Um, everything seems to be in good shape. Little pieces of something. It's got this orange thing. Like a Japanese obi that goes around it, but it's not really an obi. It says George Harrison. And on that side, it's a little uh, lotus flower, I suppose, and a lotus flower. And here are all the album covers printed in full color. It's really interesting. It's a good, he had really good album covers. Just looking at them all together, it's just... Uh, Kind of a pleasant group, a pleasant group of album covers. Not every band can say that. Sometimes bands or artists' album covers don't all kind of fit together in one oeuvre, but this one does. So, ah, here we go, another lotus flower here. Now, you look at the lotus flower, I'll look at the, uh, the lenticular cover here. Oh, it really is 3D. You'll never see it on YouTube because you can't really tell because it's not 3D, but if you turn it, uh, George is in the same bush, but he gets older and younger. Awesome, because that's the scope of the album, 1968 to, 19, uh, to 2002, 2001. Um, and on the spine, that's enough of this stuff. Anyway, this is the outer box. Uh, anyway, on the spine are the album titles listed. Wonder All Music, Electronic Sound, All Things Must Pass, Living in the Material. Whatever. I think I'm going to go through each one just for fun. How do I actually get into the box? Okay, so that, oh, that's a bunch of records. Oh. And as everybody says, basically this video is going to confirm what everybody else said in their unboxing videos. It's dusty. Um, that yes, it is very sturdy, very sturdily made. Sorry, George. And uh, wondrousness. I think a lot of artists should do this. Have all of their stuff available in one box set. Or if it's too many albums, like split it up in a decade or something. But well made and well, uh, good sounding. Okay, so here they are. First of all, the uh, this box has some kind of sort of shiny little imprint printing things on it. Uh, don't, oh, it's a, um, like studio control, like control, what do you call it? Control desk knobs, whatever they're called. Anyway, howdy road! So here are the spines, all the albums from Wonderwall Music. Uh, two box sets, I guess they're live in Japan. I don't know. Let's go see what it is. Amazing! It's Wonderwall Music. I did a whole, actually, I'm doing a series of videos about every single Beatles solo album where I focus on one album at a time and go through its history and photos and video that surrounded it and stuff like that. Just kind of talk about where it is in the um, Beatles solo story and what I think of them because many of them I have not heard. All the Beatles, I've never heard any Ringo album. But anyway, so I'm doing that and I did a video for this already. I'm very early in that series, but uh, I really liked this when I heard it for the first time and the only two or three times when I made that video. Wonderwall music, a soundtrack. Where can I put these while I'm... Is that safe? Yeah, it's got a plastic cover. And next, electronic sound. I've been thinking of doing a series of videos called something like Albums I Like That Nobody Else Likes or Albums I Love That Other People Hate or something like that. And I would put this on it because this is a very controversial album. Most people who have heard it don't want to hear it again. Some people have it. Ha have, uh, some, it has its fans. I'm a fan. I've only heard it, you know, two or three times, but it's really cool. 
and it is indeed just electronic sound. No that stuff. Now I've got an awesome copy on vinyl. The big one, the one everybody knows. All things must pass. Now I'm not going to open the shrink wrap of all of these in this video, but I have seen other videos where they uh, do make it clear that inside here, this is a real reproduction of the original. All of these are reproductions of the original vinyl versions, meaning in even the inner sleeves are reproductions, just like the originals. So all three albums are in here, plus the uh, is there a booklet. I don't know if there's a booklet. We'll get to that later. But um, all the like the Apple Jam label is intact from the beginning, from the original. Okay, there's that one. Then came Living in the Material World. John and Paul here in the I like this album. My dad had this album. He's not like a big George Harrison guy or a Beatles guy, really, but for some reason, for some reason he had this album when I was growing up, and so I remember the cover especially well, but I had the album later on. Never had the vinyl of it, I don't think. I think I had a probably had the eight track tape back in the nineties. But there you go. Living in the sorry. Living in the material world, which I've just destroyed. No, it's fine. Next. This is another, this is gonna be another one on the uh, the list of uh, albums I love that people hate or whatever it's called. The uh, infamous Dark Horse in which a cocaine-driven George, still searching for his spiritual complacency, gives us some very, very interesting music. I like it, it's good. Now, this one, Extra Texture, does have the sort of uh, basketball texture on it, on this reproduction. They really spared no expense, they really did it right. Um, I do not know this out very well. I've probably heard it once sometime at some point in my life, but I don't remember it. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Oh, by the way, it's also the die cut. So this I should take some of these out here. Ugh, well, I hate these ones with stickers and sticky tape on it. I, I have washed my hands. Oh wait, you know what? Hang on a second. I did bring this little thingy of alcohol spray I got just to clean my hands that much more. Forgot to use it though. Not so close to the box. And my records, I bought them, I'll do what I want with them. Okay, now my hands are super clean. I could, sorry, touch this uh, extra texture record. It's all sticky now. There are some scintillating things on YouTube. You should check it out. Okay, now I'm okay. Fingers are fine. What I wanted to show you and myself was this. It's the full original uh, die cut cover. Don't mess it up. So it's got this picture of George. This is the, I think they're all like this. This is the inner sleeve. Oh, not him again. Uh, this is from, I guess, from the Dark Horse Tour. Picture from that. But there's nothing in here. Originally there would have been, but they package them separately because they know what they're doing. It's actually packaged in this, it's paper on the outside and plastic on the inner, vinyl, whatever you call it, plasticky stuff, you know, on the inside. And it's got the original label. I guess that's the original label. Spared no expense, extra texture. Now the vinyl itself, I'm not an expert on vinyl, how vinyl looks, but except for a couple little um, pieces of like, dust, you know, you can get that off. Looks pretty good, I guess, I hope. Looks good. And they're all like this. They all have the original sleeve, the original inner sleeve, if there was one, with, you know, custom art on it but packaged separately from the actual record. Boom, 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 boom. I keep doing that, I keep hitting things. I shouldn't do this when I'm tired. I'm not that tired, I'm just excited. How does it go in? I don't care. I am not a purist about how records go in, as long as they're in there and I, as long as I can get them out. I keep everything in plastic sleeves, so.
Mwah. I hate these ones. I hate these ones with... I'm not even going to reuse that. I'll get a new sleeve for it later. All of this outer plastic sleeves will be replaced by me. I do buy those in bulk from Amazon because stupid ones. Okay, here's another one. 33 and a third. That, uh, if I've heard it, I don't remember it. Probably once. But now I have a reason to listen to it a lot more. When you get things on vinyl, they're different than streaming for me because uh, you just pay more attention to it. It's a big thing. It's a big physical object. You sort of, you're going to put it on the record player and go, well, let's see, what is this? What, why have I purchased this thing on vinyl records? What kind of ancient technology is this? And you pay more attention to it. Maybe there's lyrics inside. I think this is a gatefold, judging by what I can see here. Okay, and the one that I know, I can, for some reason I consider this a comeback album, and I don't know why, because I don't know the two that came before it, but I know this album fairly well, and it's excellent. I don't know, I, I don't know how other people regard it, but I mean, the whole first side I know quite well. Love comes everyone, not guilty. Here comes the moon, the moon, the moon, the moon. It's great. And of course it ends with the blow away, which is really great. I think it's great. This kind of soft, it's not new agey, it's just acoustic, soft, lush. But George can make that work. That's not normally my type of music, but he does it. And now I have it on vinyl. All right, here, Somewhere in England by George Harrison. That's got, uh, I like this one a lot too. I've heard this one three or four times. I forgot about this album. Unconsciousness Rules, like that a lot. Um, all those years ago, obviously, is really, really cool. There's real, uh, real heart behind that one. And I don't know this one super well, but I'm looking forward to hearing it again. Now, I know what the next one is. It's Gone Trapo, right? I used to have a copy of this record, this vinyl record, because when I was like a teenager in Augusta, Georgia, um, there was a guy called Ed Turner who had a radio show in town, and I used to call him up, call him up and uh, he did it on Sunday nights for four hours, and anyway, he was kind of surprised that a kid as young as me was calling up the radio station asking for Sid Barrett songs and stuff. So anyway, he also had a keyboard shop in town where he sold like organs and pianos, and so he uh, asked me to come stop by the, the keyboard shop one day, and I did, just chatted with him for 15 minutes in his office, and uh, he had a bunch of records sitting in a box in his office for some reason that he didn't need. And he gave me this. And I'm not sure I ever listened to it. I always meant to, but now I can hear it. I know people really don't care for this album all that much. Then I've heard other people say that George Harrison never had a bad album. There's good stuff on all of them. I'm going to find out one of these months. Okay, now one of his super popular albums that I should have heard, but I never have heard except for the two hits that were on it, is this one, Cloud Nine. Another comeback album from 1987 or something. So that'll be fun. <laughs> and wow, what a great, what a great album to go out on. Everything on this album is great. This is a perfect album. I heard this one because, uh, I got into this one because at around 2001, 2002, especially after he died, uh, the radio station I listened to at the time was playing Stuck Inside a Cloud a whole lot. And to this day, I think that's, oh, what a song. And this is, uh, I think original copies of this are really hard to come by, as I understand it. But who cares? I got my own now. It appears to be a gatefold, and I'm going to play that one quite a bit, I think. Okay, now, here's the other thing. Live in Japan. Uh, I've never heard this. This is a double album. This is a re-release of the double vinyl album. I don't know if you can see the, it's black, a black George Harrison print on a black background. So it's kind of, kind of like the outside of the box here where it's kind of glossy on matte or something like that. Uh, speaking of Augusta, Georgia, back in the day, back when this was new, back in 1991 or so, Right, excuse me, Radioactive Records in Augusta had a copy of this for a lot, the longest time. I used to always see it and I never bought it. I don't know, maybe it was like 20 or $30 or something. Something out of my budget, but I never bought it. I understand they're very hard to come by. I've heard people say that they like the sound on this better than the original. Anyway, let's see what it's like. 
George's only solo tour after 1974. He only did two. And this was a short one. This was only Japan, I think. And this was the live album from that with Joe with uh, Eric Clapton. So that's it. The only thing left is these other two records. They're uh, maybe I should open this. This is why people use knives. I use my thumbnail, which is a registered weapon. Ba, 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 ba. There's some scintillating things over on YouTube. You should really check it out. Sometimes there's people, okay. Let's see. Almost there, almost there. I've gotten a corner off. Oh. This is two picture discs. The great, the great failing of this box set, which I totally agree with people who say this, is that uh, there is probably an album or two worth of unreleased, I forgot I had a knife, uh, scissors, Un, I mean, um, non-album B-sides and singles and stuff like Bangladesh and stuff like that. And they should have put, they should have had all these plus uh, a disc, you know, a bonus disc of just all the singles, all the B-sides, A-sides and B-sides and songs from movie soundtracks and stuff that uh, are nowhere else, but they didn't. What they did instead was give us this extra little box of two uh, picture discs. The outside has got Friar Park Studio session sheets reproduced on it. The inside perhaps exists. The inside has, I don't know if you can see this, I'm sure you can't. The uh, inside has this little foam record size thing, which I will never get out. Here you go. It's got, I'm going to tear it. It's got a piece of paper. It looks like a Friar Park Studio invoice, but it's actually a list of uh, credits for this box set. Anyway, what it has is these two kind of silly, kind of interesting, but picture discs. Not full of unreleased songs. This is, they're both from the Cloud Nine album, so When We Was Fab, back when trench coats were all the rage. People used to wear trench coats like that for all the time. I don't know why. When We Was Fab, uh, Zig Zag, That's the Way It Goes. I think at least one of those is a non-LP song, so it's something. So there's that on one side, this on the other. I mean, it's kind of cool. I like When We Was Fab. There's an extended version or something like that, or original version. Look at George. Why did people wear trench coats like that? And they all did it. 80s. And the other one is Got My Mind Set On You. Uh, there's another one, Got My Mind Set On You, extended version, single version, and a song called Lay His Head. I don't know if that's a B-side, I mean a non-LP song, perhaps it is. So they're very nice, they're very well done, but you don't get Bangladesh and Miss Odell and all that kind of stuff, so it's too bad. Too bad, but has any box set ever been perfect? So there you go, that's everything. Ooh. I'm going to bust that up. Put it all back. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you've watched this far, you are my kind of person. I'm going to be reviewing every single one of these albums. Often these versions, but I mean the albums itself as music. Um, some of them I've already done. I'm, as I make this video now, I'm up through... What did I do last? John Lennon's Imagine, I think. So next is Paul McCartney's Rant. No, Wildlife. Yeah, Wildlife is next. Yeah. Anyway, so this is the George Harrison box set. I had a lot of fun opening this. I've been waiting for this for like three or four weeks since I ordered it. It's been driving me nuts. It's finally here. Thanks for watching.